Hello everyone, this is Robert, and these are my new set of chisels. My dad actually got me these for my birthday, and so I thought this would be a fun little project to make a mount for them up here on the pegboard. I have a nice little space cleared out. I use chisels from time to time on things, so it'd be nice to have them accessible. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. I'm going to be designing and 3D printing some cool little mount for these things so that they can go right up there. So let's do it. I'm over here now. So whenever I start a project like this, there's always two things I look at. The goals, um, you know, what are my objectives? What am I trying to accomplish? And have I met the goals at the end? And then secondly, what are my design constraints? So the design goals are pretty simple. I want these mounted vertically to the pegboard. I want them easy to grab and put back. So that's kind of critical if they're not easy or if it's cumbersome to just go and grab one and then cumbersome put it back, that does not meet one of the design objectives. And I also want to be able to um, somehow protect the tips on the end of them. I don't really like these covers because they're kind of kind of line it up. They're very sharp and so it's kind of a little cumbersome. So I want something to protect the end and they need to be easy to remove and put back on. So those are the design considerations. Uh, for the constraints, I have this area to work with. I've kind of, you know, lined these up roughly and I think that's kind of a good amount of space to be able to still grab the handles and they can fit, eh, you know, vertically something like that and this is kind of the most real estate that I want to use. So those are kind of my design constraints. I also have um, one of the mounting for the pegboard down here, so I got to kind of work around that a little bit. And then the other thing is I want to try out this new idea that I've had of using um, like automotive trim retaining clips for the pegboard. Uh, more on that later, but I want to find a better way to attach stuff to pegboard for this type of project. So more on that later. Um, let's dive right into SolidWorks and I'll kind of show you the design that I'm thinking of. Okay, so big spoiler alert, um, both of these parts are already made. I didn't really want to do the whole thing where I time lapse and talk about the whole design process. So I'm just going to kind of go over some details in here. Hopefully this maybe helps a couple people out on what it takes to design something like this, or at least what my process is. So we're going to start with the top part. There's two pieces here. And let me start with this uh, main sketch. I tend to do a lot of sketches and kind of construction stuff. So if we look at this, um, we can basically see that this is the rough outline of how much space there was on the pegboard. If you remember from the last thing, this is kind of the layout. I found that 43 millimeters between each one was um, kind of a nice spacing, gives me enough room to kind of grab my hand around it. And then we've got like five millimeters down here for, I don't really know what reason. This is the overall height of the actual, oh yeah. That's just a little buffer. That was a little buffer for the bottom, for the chisels to hold. This is the actual length of the chisel body, the longest one. And then the 17 and a half up here is the band, that little metal band at the top. That's what we're gonna be clipping around. So pretty simple, each one of these is the chisels, one, two, three, four, five in the linear pattern. So that's the sketch that I start from. Then we have this sketch over here, which let me click on that. That's the first extrusion. And basically what I'm doing here is this is the outer body of the chisel. It's about 35 millimeters. I think it's like 32, 33 millimeters, but this is the outer body of it. So I want to be able to get my hand around the outside. So that's kind of the offset. And then the base of this is going to be a little over five millimeters apparently. And um, yeah, the rest of this is built off of just semicircles or full circles and I usually do a little bit of an offset. So you can see there's just a quarter inch offset. That's actually not a quarter inch. I don't know why I did 5.08, rounding error. But we basically have this little offset so it curves around and that gives us that kind of clip feature to where it kind of clips in. Somewhere between two and five millimeters is generally what I do for something like this at that size. Kind of gives you a nice satisfying little click into it. So that ends up being that and then we just kind of you know do the basic thing add some fillets um, i did the um, cuts for the screw holes or the fastener holes and those are pretty simple oops wrong sketch it's that cut 
Um, those are pretty simple. I just drew a construction line right there through the dead middle, and I know that my spacing is equal inches. That's three inches, that's two inches, and that's uh, however many that inches is across. So basically, we're just spacing them out, and you can see that they came really close to the um, actual clips, hence the 43 millimeters. The spacing was just so that all this kind of played out nicely. And then um, a couple more fillets just on the top. I usually do a little bit of a fillet right there so it slides in nice and easy. And then I do a chamfer on the bottom side. I end up not using that whole vertical. Get rid of this. I end up not using the whole vertical just for many reasons, but I, I just kind of like cutting it off a little bit better and making this a little bit taller. And that's pretty much all there is to the top part. So let's go on to the bottom. One more thing that I should have mentioned, if we look at these um, outlines right here, that is the um, body size for the flange. It's like a 16 millimeter, 15 and a half millimeter, yeah, 15 and a half millimeter flange that's on those little um, clips or fasteners that I'm using. So that's why that's there. And then lastly, this is going to be printed like this vertically so that the clips are the strongest. If I print it like that, these clips are going to be very weak since the layers kind of go like that. So we got to make sure that everything was printed like that. So enough of that. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. So we got our solid bodies. Where are my solid bodies? Um, somewhere. I guess I only have the one right now. So moving on to this sketch. This is the next sketch for the bottom. Each one of these represents the chisel, and we got a little buffer down here. This is for a little foam pad. I'll talk about that later. It's a little foam pad to keep the um, tips all nice and sharp, so they're not just kind of resting on the plastic. And then here's that fastener I was talking about. So if we just kind of step forward, yeah, there's our solid body. So I'll go ahead and get rid of that. So you can see this is kind of the shape that I came up with. And it gets a little wonky, but let me explain what's going on here. So this is the width of the chisel, and I added a little bit of an extra bit on that width just so that I could have a little bit of wiggle room down in the bottom. And I'm basically making this line that is um, quarter inch offset on either side. So it's a quarter inch wider than the actual chisel. You don't want the hole to be like exactly the right size. So we just have this little bit of an offset, steps down, goes to this, steps down, goes to that, steps down, because each one of the chisels is a different length except for the smallest two. So, you know, this can't be just straight across because then the pocket over here would be really deep. So I want the same amount of a pocket, quarter inch, for each chisel. I want them to just set in a quarter inch, and the rest of it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this is the bottom row for mounting, so that's where that mounting hole is down there, and then here is the mounting hole up there. That's exactly one inch apart. This might not make any sense, but I'll, I don't know. Let's just see how this goes. So this is how this part ended up being made. So then we kind of look like that, and then we step through it, and then this is the cut for the first two holes. I had to do these separately. There's probably a better way to do this, but I did this each one of these steps, right? So then we have the next cut, the next cut, and the next cut. And these are, as you can see, just according to the pockets that I made there, nice and easy. Then we added a chamfer. So I have this angled chamfer on all of these because when you're sliding the chisel out like that, you don't want to put it in perfectly vertical. You want to be able to unclip it from the top, angle it out, and then pull it out. So I have a little chamfer on that front edge. And now the mounting. This is where stuff starts to get really complicated. The pegboard, let me get rid of that. Um, the pegboard, this is the top mounting rail, and then all of these are on one inch uh, mounting. So that's the top one, then we have this one and that one. And of course they didn't line up cleanly to the chisels. You see there's no real good place for mounting. I could mount it right there, but it would be literally right here in the way of the chisel. Right? And let's see, let's get this other solid body up here. 
you can see where they're mounted. One of them kind of in a bad spot, kind of in a bad spot. So what I ended up doing is I made these um, new extrusions right there. Then we come down, then we cut a hole through them. Then I cut through it and then just clean it up with a bunch of chamfers and fillets and that ends up being the final part. So it's kind of one of those weird looking parts and you know when you look at it you're like why the hell does it look like that? Well this is why it looks like that because all the chisels are different lengths, the widths are obviously different, and the mounting holes were not in places that I originally wanted them to be. So there you go. That's what the ended up. That's what it ended up looking like. These two parts. So now let's get these printed. And look at that. Due to the magic of video editing and 3D printer, we have these two finished parts. This one turned out really nice. It was printed like that. So I was a little bit worried about the overhangs, but it printed just fine. There's a tiny, tiny bit of sagging up in that one, but should be totally, totally fine. And that's what. It looks like pretty nice. This is a um, Hatchbox Matte PLA, which I think prints very, very handsomely. And the top one, this is actually a prototype. It's a little broke, um, but that's what it looks like. And if we grab one of the chisels, it's a nice little snap in there. Just enough. I don't really need these things to hold a lot because they're just kind of, you know, sitting in there, but Nice little snap and holds them just fine. So yeah. So let's um, talk about the little automotive rivets because this is kind of the prototype and the first time I'm ever using those. So let's do that. So here are the fasteners that I'm going to be using. I had this idea a long time ago and I never really did anything with it. Um, but these are retainer clips or plastic push rivets. These are used in the automotive industry for holding on like uh, plastic trim pieces and stuff. And basically the way they work is you just kind of push in this plunger and then it expands out like that. And I just so happened to find a size that works perfectly with pegboard. The problem with printing stuff for the pegboard, especially 3D printing, is you really want one flat surface. Well, nothing can protrude on this side. It all just becomes overhangs at that point. And if you're printing it like this, then the layers are very weak. If you're printing it like that, then the whole underside would need to be supports. Or you could 3D print a separate piece, but this is just a much better solution because all your 3D printed pieces just need a through hole. And in this example, these just kind of go through it. And when you press in that plunger, it expands out and then you can just kind of pull that plunger out and remove it. So I think these are going to be a really nice uh, way to attach 3D printed stuff to pegboard. Let's try it out. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I forgot that I got to put in the little foam pieces. I'm using this little um, foam gasket stuff that I had on hand. It's an eighth of an inch by an eighth of an inch and comes in this nice long spool. And so I'm just cutting that and putting it in the bottom. I accounted for this distance in the model, so everything should be fine. And yeah, this stuff is really sticky, so it's actually kind of hard to get in there, but it should add for a nice little cushion for the edge of the chisel to sit inside so it doesn't hit against the hard plastic. Okay, so now it's actually time to install the bottom rail and then the top rail. I think I'm going to end up really liking these retainer clips for pegboard purposes. These aren't my favorite ones. I might still look for a better one. They have this Phillips pattern, which kind of makes you think you could screw them in and out, but they don't really work like that. You just basically push them in. And for these particular ones, once they're in, they're in. The only real way to get them out is to drive a little wood screw in the front a little bit and then just kind of pull out that pin, but they absolutely do not unscrew. The Phillips head is just kind of cosmetically molded in and it's too soft and it just kind of rounds off so it doesn't really work like that. But pushing them in works perfectly fine and man do they hold. It is a very, very tight connection. I've learned so far from my very limited use with these little retaining clips that they're kind of uh, single use only. They're kind of really difficult to get back out and once you kind of push them in it's really difficult to extract a little plunger. But they're about 10 cents a piece. You can get a pack of 100 for about 10 bucks. I've got a link down below. So yeah, but they work out quite well.
And of course, now it's time to get them all mounted on the little rack. And yeah, everything works out pretty good. Getting them on there looks to be a bit cumbersome from the video, but it's really just because I'm kind of off camera at this weird angle. But when you're directly in front of it, it's really easy to kind of get it lined up. I think if I had to do it over again, I might make the little bottom section just a little bit larger, but eh, it's really not that bad. I'm just kind of nitpicking at this point. But yeah, everything works out exactly how I'd hope it would. So there you have it, the chisel rack. Um, I moved um, some tape, you can't really see it up here, but I moved some smaller tape up here to give myself a little bit of room. And yeah, this works out great. You just kind of slap it in there, push it in, and the clip actually holds the chisel mostly. It's kind of just barely floating above. So the little foam piece in there really isn't resting that much weight of the chisel. It's mostly held up top, which is fantastic. So yeah, pretty happy with that really happy with these retaining clips. I'm definitely gonna be doing a lot more with these. I have a link down below for these in the description. These seem to fit just perfectly with a standard pegboard, which is a quarter inch hole at a one inch spacing. So keep that in mind. The one design consideration that you have is you want about a five millimeter depth. That's how um, big that depth needs to be so that they splay out properly behind the pegboard. So yeah, check these out, design around these. I know I'm gonna be using these a lot more to design more custom things for the pegboard like this lovely chisel holder. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Check out the uh, links down below and I'll see you again in the next video.